according to Reason's manual, you more than likely have been using Reason wrong this entire time. What's up, everybody? Chris Reed Beast here, back with another video. In this video, I want to show you guys something that I just learned about Reason that I think you guys or will be interested to learn as well. And I actually learned this by reading Reason's manual for its actual software. And this is interesting because this is something that I often do from time to time just to learn different things about Reason and to make sure that I'm actually understanding the program and the different functions and features of it. So I'm gonna show you guys right now what I just learned and what it is concerning with is actually this master section. So I was always looking at this master section and I'm looking at so many different knobs and different things you can click and turn and change. And it's like a lot of stuff. And so it's like, all right, let's go through one by one and actually learn some stuff. And so I actually started here in this section. So what I'm going to be doing is actually talking to you guys about the master section the master bus, the master fader section, the master compressor, all of those things. But the first thing I wanted to point out is this master fader section right here. And I just wanted to tell you guys, according to Reason's manual, you more than likely have been using Reason wrong this entire time. And it's probably not your fault. And there's a couple of reasons why I say that. First, let me actually show you in the manual what I'm talking about. So here is Reason's manual, and here's the section where they talk about the master fader section. And I want you guys to watch this as we look at this control room output section. I'm gonna read this. It says, the control room outputs are located on the back of the master section device. To use the control room output section, the outputs have to be connected to your monitor system. This can be done manually by patching cables from the control room out connectors to a separate output pair on the Reason hardware device. I bring that up because I started using the control room out in order so that I can add that to my stream using the Restream plugin. But watch this. On this page, it actually says something very important. It says the control room outputs, which are separate from the master out bus, are the outputs that you should monitor or listen from. This allows you to monitor the main mix and to adjust your monitoring level without affecting the master out bus. You can also monitor the effects send or return buses in this section. The section contains the following items. And then you can just go on and read the rest of this stuff. So what is that saying? What is that actually saying? That's saying that more than likely you have actually been using reason and the master section completely wrong. But it's not necessarily your fault because Reason does state in its manual that when you start a new program, when you start a new project, automatically in your template, the automatic, what happens is it automatically connects your master out to your main audio output. That always happens on everyone's template uh, opening file opening folder if we go to new and we select audio track recording and then we flip this guy around so that you see it's not just my template here here's their template what are they using master out master out to the audio outputs that's from reasons built in templates but we have been using it completely wrong. This is the setup that we're actually supposed to be using. This top section is our audio ins and outs. So right here will be your input. So if you have a audio device, if you have an interface that has inputs, meaning you can plug in guitars or lines, or you can plug in a microphone, most uh, standard interfaces have two inputs and they have two outputs, a left and a right output, and it has inputs, usually, you know, a one and two input. So if we're looking here, I'm gonna zoom in real quick. If we're looking here, we can see right here, here's input one and input two. And I have the Scarlet 2i2, so I have two inputs and two outputs. I have the one, two in the front of the device, 
and then the left and right outputs in the back of the device. So this one too correlates to our audio input. So that should be over here for the sampling inside of Reason. And sampling in Reason is not the same as when you go to your track and you add an audio track. That's not the same thing. You won't actually see that routed to anything that actually happens in the background. So that is not the routing that happens there. What that is referring to is when you see these little buttons right here where it says start sampling. So that's what that input section is for. But this output section, depending on what audio interface you have, your output section might have have more than two outputs. It might have more than a left and a right output like the Scarlett 2i2. You might have uh, four outputs or eight outputs. You might have multiple outputs on your audio card on your audio interface. So what Reason is saying, according to the manual, is that we should be using this control room out to listen to our music and not the master out because the master out is supposed to be separate from what actually is happening in your music that you should be monitoring. One of the reasons why they say you should monitor using the control room out is because you get access to this knob right here. When you have access to this knob right here, you actually can go above zero dB and you can go below zero dB without actually clipping or affecting the master out of your track. So when you go to export your track, you're not exporting the control room out, you're actually only exporting the master bus out. What you're listening to is the master channel, but that is not going to be affected. So for example, if I was to raise this knob on the master level, that's going to create peaking. That's going to create a problem, an issue that we do not want to have. We want that to remain at zero dB. However, I can raise the level of this control room out and give me an extra six dB in case I want to make my output of my monitoring louder. I want to hear the music louder without actually making these instruments louder. I can actually just crank up the volume so that way I can hear it better or in my monitors, in my, in my speakers or in my headphones, I can use this control room out to make it louder. I actually had to do some routing, some different routing in order so that I can get sound from Reason into OBS. So just ignore this Restream standalone device. It's just so I can send sound from Reason into my OBS where I am doing the screen record. What we're doing here in this routing is we're going from the control room out into an audio splitter and we're splitting the sound so that we can send the sound to the audio output and also so we can send the sound to this device, which is sending this audio to OBS. So I'm gonna show you guys right now, when we go to listen to the music. As we can see, we get that control room out and we can actually raise the level of the music, but we're not actually peaking the music. It's just so we can hear what does it sound like if I'm playing the music louder. Now, if I use the master level or if I raise these levels up or if I do something to the instruments to make them louder, and that causes me to peak, then that's not actually what I was trying to do. What I was trying to do is just hear the music louder. But sometimes in what we're doing is we're over compressing, over limiting, we're overdoing things because we're trying to make the music louder by adding in more and more effects into the master section by going over here to this master compressor and adding in makeup. We're just doing all these different things because we're trying to hear the music louder and that is not actually how the signal processing happens. With the control room out, we can monitor 
the music and we can make it louder or softer without it actually affecting the master out. As a general rule, the way that I look at rendering and listening to music in Reason using this software is I wait until I hit the export button. When I go up here and I hit this export song as audio file and I actually export this file, the file that I get when it's exported, I don't know, whatever the processing is that's happening in the background, Reason is just sprinkling something on top of that thing. And it's actually just sampling everything out and it's pushing it out in a way. And it sounds so much better. So, and part of that might be because we haven't actually been monitoring the way that the program has been designed to monitor. So. I don't know. You guys tell me your thoughts. I thought that was really interesting to read that from the reason manual where it says that right here, we're actually not supposed to be using the master out bus, but we are supposed to be using the control room out. I thought that was really interesting to see you guys. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions. I will tell you if you hear the two side by side, meaning the master out and the control room out, if you hear them side by side, then you won't be able to tell the difference. It's only the only time you'll tell a difference is when you either raise or lower this level. And of course, raise and lower this level, because if you lower your master level, no matter where this is set, if you're hearing from the control room out, it's going to lower the level as well. <music> But as you can see right here, even though we lowered the level on the control room out, we can see the fader, the, the meters have not changed. It's still producing the meters exactly how they are. So we've made it quieter from what we're able to hear, but Reason is still playing the music at the same volume. <laughs> The next video that I'm going to show you guys is actually going to be checking out these meters and it's going to be checking out how we are supposed to read the meters and use the meters and looking at this spectrum analyzer. Why do we have a spectrum EQ on the master fader section if there's not if they're not going to give us the ability to actually adjust any of the EQ? Why is this here? How can we use this? How can we? use this to our advantage when we're making music in reason that'll be in our next video for now i thank you guys for watching if you got something out of this video please let me know in the comment section and until next time peace